Hello, I hope you are doing well by the grace of God. Uh, what a strange time we live in. Um, who would have thought that four or five weeks ago that we would be in this situation? Uh, I went to the shops today. I had to take the car out. Um, I thought I've forgotten how to drive because I haven't driven around for the last two weeks. But anyway, um, we're here uh, because uh, we are going to look at the Gospel of Mark, the RBT slot, if you like. Um, uh, we thought rather than writing an RBT uh, blurb uh, on the website daily, which I take sometimes can be quite hard to find, um, we thought, well, why not make a video? Uh, partly because it's more relatable and also it's more personal. Um, this month, April, we will be going through the Gospel of Mark. <clears throat> and just to give you a little bit of background before we dive into the Gospel of Mark, Mark was probably uh, written during the reign of Nero, which is basically AD, uh, between AD 60 and between AD, between AD 60 to AD 70. And in AD 64, a fire broke out in Rome and Nero basically blamed uh, the Christians. And there was much persecution and he put many, many Christians to death, brutally killed them. And it was during this time that Mark wrote this gospel account to encourage Christians in Rome and also to remind them of Jesus, the suffering saviour, the suffering servant, that he is with them even in this darkest and bleakest season of their life. And we are not being persecuted as such. Maybe that will come. I don't know. Maybe that will come in the future. Um, but we are going through a pandemic. And, um, and I believe, and I hope you believe as well, that the answer is always found in Jesus Christ, you know, not books, not blogs, not uh, BBC, not Boris. Those things are good and helpful, don't get me wrong. But I believe, and I hope you believe as well, um, that the answer, that our answer, our longings, our desire is always found in Jesus Christ. So our reading for this week is Mark chapter 1 to chapter 4, and I hope you find it, uh, you have found it helpful I found it immensely helpful just looking at the, uh, the, uh, the Jesus of the Bible as Mark writes the, his account, his healing, his miracles, his authority over things. I was just blown away by it. Um, so if you want to go and grab your Bibles or your device, if you have one with you, uh, you can pause because this is a video. Uh, do pause and then we will move on. Um, and in our time together like this, rather than going through verse by verse, uh, we will be looking the, at the overall big picture, if you like. We, will, uh, we won't spend much time on the verses or uh, uh, on the nitty gritty of it, but we will look at the bigger picture, the bigger point uh, of, chapter, of chapter one to chapter four. So today I thought I want to, uh, today I thought I would draw our attention to three main things. Number one, the preaching of Jesus. Uh, secondly, uh, the power of Jesus. And third, the presence of Jesus. So the first one, the preaching of Jesus. So if you have your Bibles or your device with you, uh, look down with me there in chapter 1, verse 38. We see Jesus saying to his disciples, Let us go to the next towns or villages that I may preach there also. For that is why I came. That is why I came. Interesting, isn't it? That this is why Jesus came. Uh, he has come to preach and proclaim the good news of God. He has come to pro proclaim the forgiveness of sins. I counted the word teaching and preaching nine times in chapter 1 to chapter 4. Uh, Jesus preached about our need for repentance, our need for forgiveness. Uh, what it means to follow him, what it, would, what it will cost us to follow a saviour, a suffering servant like Jesus Christ. Uh, he not only preached the good news, he also corrected uh, the wrong understanding of God's law. So, for example, if you look down towards uh, the end of chapter 2 and towards the beginning of chapter 3, Jesus, we see Jesus there correcting uh, the leaders and the people there, uh, the, and, and pointing them uh, to the right understanding of Sabbath and uh, of fasting. Why did God give them uh, this law in the first place and the right meaning and the true intention, if you like? 
He came, uh, he pointed people back uh, to God's heart. Secondly, we see the power of Jesus. I mean, it's just all over the place as you uh, read through the Gospel of Mark, but I just want to focus on a few of them. So we see Jesus' power over disease, healing people of their illness, uh, healing the leper, healing a man who could not walk, healing the man with the withered hand. We see Jesus' power over demons, so over disease, over demons. We see Jesus' power in his authority to forgive sins in chapter 2. We see Jesus' power over the waves and the storm, chapter 4. And at the end of chapter 4, after calming the waves and the storm, his disciples were filled with great fear. And they asked this interesting question to one another. Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Quite right. That's a very good question, is it? Who is this man? Uh, who is this man who can forgive sins? Who is this man who can heal our broken bodies? Who is this man who can drive out demons? Who is this man? Well... The Bible says right at the beginning, at least in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 1, the beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amazing. He is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. <clears throat> and finally, the presence of Jesus. By that I mean the presence of his kingdom. Uh, so Jesus said right at the beginning, in chapter 1, verse 15, At the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. So Jesus is there. He's talking about kingdom. Uh, the kingdom is at hand. In other words, Jesus is saying, the kingdom is here. My kingdom is here. His presence is felt through his preaching, and it is accompanied by his power in the healings, and in the miracles. In chapter 3, uh, we see the Pharisees accusing Jesus and that uh, accusing him that he's uh, casting out demons because he himself uh, is demon possessed. And Jesus says, how can, how can Satan cast out Satan? How can a house uh, or a kingdom uh, stand strong if the house or the kingdom is divided? Jesus says, it doesn't make sense. And Jesus says in chapter 3, uh, verse 27, he says, No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods, listen to this, unless he first binds the strong man, that indeed he may plunder his house. So in other words, Jesus is saying, I've come to plunder the strong man's house. In other words, he's saying, I've come to destroy, to plunder Satan and his demons. That's why I can cast out demons. That's why I can heal people. That's why I can forgive people. That's why I have authority over the sea and the waves and the storm. And I want to end our time uh, with this question. Do we really believe or only say we believe in Jesus' power and authority? Uh, when we are fearful and worried, where do we look for comfort? Where do we look for hope? Where do we look for assurance? I would say we look to Jesus Christ who has the power to forgive sins, who has the power over demons, who has the power over death, who has the power over disease. He is the Son of God. Well, I hope you have found uh, that little bit of our time together helpful, and I hope to see you next week. Uh, next week's reading is chapter 5 to chapter 8. Ciao.